You know what? Forget it. I'm not even shocked anymore. Right. Let's make this understandable, ya bunch of endemocratic fuckheads. Ya coons. So, everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, the Scottish, um, the Scottish government has actually voted for a second referendum by the Hollywood Parliament. Fucking hell. Just days before things were gonna get so lovely. And now they're just in turmoil again. I thought we were supposed to be leaving the EU to... Um, I thought we were supposed to be leaving the EU to think of our prosperous. Think of trading with the entire world. You know... Negotiations, deal with our own problem, no court of justice from the EU. Now nah, we're fucking have to deal with Nicholas Sturgeon and Hollywood. Flippin' amazing, eh? Flippin' amazing! I can't actually believe this is actually happening, but the good thing is, I'd say, is there's no date. But there's still gonna be a lot of problems with this to come, so we should take a look at the article from the Scottish. Um, sorry, the Scottish section of the BBC News. So, here we are. Scottish Independence. SNP's back referendum in the Hollywood vote. Hollywood, sorry. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not a lot. It was only a few. Now, let's go and take a look at the article, like I said. B -b 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 Look at Jackson. His face just says it all, doesn't he? He's like, are you fucking serious? He's actually the only guy who's up. The con he's the conservative guy. He's the only one who's actually been saying, are you seriously still going to keep going about this stuff? Which I'll show you in a clip later. So, SMPs have backed the calls of a new referendum on Scottish independence in the Hollywood loop. Uh, votes in Hollywood. Yes. Despite Boris Johnson telling her that fuck off, sending a really lovely letter which you see here, telling her not to do it because you said it was a second referendum which you shouldn't be having. And, the f well, she shouldn't be having a second referendum fucking anyway because she doesn't expect the Democratic vote, which I will hit at the end of the video. But the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has ejected her call to transfer powers or oh, transfer of powers, saying 2014 vote was once in a generation event. Now, may I remember everyone? She said that, Alex Salmon said that, and a lot of other people who supported Scottish independence said that too. I know that because I was one of those gullible fuckheads who had to deal with the I lost the election thing, but I accepted it. Looks like the SP have not. Again. So, how, how, how big was the numbers? 64 to 54 to agree the circumstances have changed since then. 10 fucking people? Really? See, this is the thing about what happens in democracies because it's 10 people? Fucking hell. Oh man, it's just, this is bad. I mean, I made the. was making a video on her the SMP's thingy for a visa and that was stupid. Now they think they've got a lead head here. They don't even have permission from Westminster. If Boris, if you're listening to this, tell her to fuck off, please, in my words. Let's see. Uh, the vote is binding on the UK government and the Scottish Secretary, Alistair Jack, told the BBC Scotland that the UK government's permission was not remotely charged by it. Hmm. Ms. Sturgeon is due to make a speech on Friday setting the next steps in the campaign to make sure Scotland's futures, futures in the pan nation. Great. Well, this was done today and it was like, uh, it just says here, actually I'll continue reading it. Scottish government wants to hold a new referendum in the second half of 2020. <laughs> oh, you want to do it this year? Right like now, when we're in the middle of a negotiation? Are you fucking mad? Yeah, that's exactly what they were wanting to do. Because there was a guy on uh, Scotland Tonight, French guy, funny enough, and he actually works for the SNP, 
and he was like, well, we tried to stop them before, so we're going to do it now, and he has all the confidence in the world. I will make a video on that, because that was so annoying to watch. SMP won 48 out of 59 seats in Scotland in the December's general election. Yes, they did do that. They did do that. But the thing is, they lost Murray, the Conservative held seat, and they lost a few other areas too. But the thing was, if you look at the numbers throughout the whole of Scotland, people in that the Aberdeen area, area was only just under the mark of losing to the Tories. I mean, sorry, losing to the SNP. And like I said in my uh, general election video, man, it's just, it was just like so, so far, so far, man, so far, crazy. Mr. Johnson replied he could not agree to any request for transfer of power that would lead a further independence referendums. Well, I hope so, because we have Brexit to deal with, people. We have Brexit to deal with. But there's actually a good bit down here where, um, let's say, the to there's the Tories over there, the Lib Dems and the Labour. Funny enough, Labour is on the side of not wanting this at all. So does the Liberal Democrats, because if you remember the guy who's in the uh, Lib Dems, doesn't actually want um i'm not going to read any of that because that is just the same stuff we've heard over and over again um this actually would be a good one read i'll get there in a minute um yeah it's it was like there's actually people in scotland like the we don't want to be apart from the uk because what the smp are asking for is insane get a separate country but no border between England and Scotland but join the European Union but the thing is we left the European Union to be an independent country for our own laws and all that so why would you join it again you're not independent if you have to be working with a trade partner that's why we walked away finally now so let's we hear from Brian Taylor a political editor of Scotland I actually like this guy. He does make a good point every time he says something about, you know, politics. He's done it for years. So let's see what he says. This is tricky ground, ground for Nicola Sturgeon. She, yeah, she, sorry. <laughs> she yearns for independence, as, as do her party members and her wider yes movement. Yes, they do. But she's aware of the political absurds in the path. Um, no, sorry, the political obstacles in the path. Not the least the refusal of the UK government to grant power to hold a st stationary refer secondary referendum. Yes, she could go court and challenge that position, but it would be unlikely to win. Yes, because we there's actually a thing going through uh, the courts in London and that just now to tell people not to use the courts because the courts shouldn't be interfering in political affairs. This is what happened when Boris Johnston, I believe, yeah, he prorogued Parliament and all that had to go into court case and it was a lot of taxpayers' money being wasted on that situation. Anyway, um, however, she needs to keep the independence movement motivated, particularly within her own party's list, Helen's the, par the speech plan on Friday at a party rally. Well, we know where all the British folk are going to be. <laughs> I like how she's going to do this. I'm, I'm not going to read any more. Well, I'll read this bit here. I'll repeat, I'll, I'll repeat a point I have made more than once. Nicola Sturgeon does not want simply to hold a referendum. She wants to win a real one. Yeah, but she's undemocratic. That's the problem. She's very, very undemocratic. Because it's like, well, no, I'll, I'll get there. I will get there. Um, it's crazy because she's going to do it on Friday, Brexit Day, but it was like today she bothered to have this fucking vote in the first place when like, all the MP members left the parliament this morning or today after they finally negotiated on the deal and we'd be leaving and then you go back to Scotland trying to fuck things up again. You, I kind of wonder why there was a lob of the blues fight after all. I'm just saying. And... She's just not going to give up, is she? So, I hope the people actually wake up to what the hell's going on. 
So we, I think I should leave lead the what was at the end of this article from the actual leaders of the opposition parties because, like I said, there are people who are against, you know, the independence after all. <laughs> Funny enough, it's Labour as one of them. In the chamber, Scottish Conservative intern, um, it, well, this guy, um, intern leader Jackson Collor said, the whole debate was really being held to benefit the independence campaigners, with Miss Sturgeon being afraid to tell the hard truth to her supporters. He said, the first minister is pursuing an obsession and at the expense of the country's real progressing priorities, saying the government should be instead to be focused on the issues like education and crime. Yes, because the country is actually fucked right now. And if you haven't seen a video that I'm going to make recently, or I should, I will be making a new one, there was actually a rape gang thing found in Glasgow, like the Manchester ones, but no one wants to report about them because the police kept that quiet as well. And I think the police in Scotland are going to get a little more harsh for what they should be getting because they're getting treated too soft for what they are just now. They're even trying to force a diversity thing, despite, you know, it, it, it's just unimaginable the amount of problems that's in this country. It's There's a reason why the PNJ just came out with an article de like pointing out which is the most deprived areas in Scotland. You know, an actual list of like 2,000 things. It's crazy how the PNJ, that's a local paper in the northeast, um, of Scotland, and that actually shows you which areas are most deprived. Fucking nuts. Anyway, I want to hear what the leaders, the Scottish Labour leader says. The Scottish Labour leader, Richard Leonard, said that the people of Scotland don't want enough independence there for them anytime soon. Exactly. And he said, nobody in this chamber really believes there will be a referendum this year, said Mr. Mr. Using up Uplizing the parliament to speak to her own party and she will not be telling them the truth. <laughs> because it, it's, it's going to fuck up, guys. It's going to fuck up real bad. Um, and the Scottish Lib Dem leader, Willie Lenny. That's the guy. I actually like Willie Lenny more than Joe Swindon. I wonder how he, call, I wonder how he still got his seat. Hmm. He also, sorry, the guy also said the debate was for different factions of the SNP, rather than the country at large, arguing that the people are sick and fed up of constitutional division. Yes, they are. They are so fucking fed up of it, uh, everything. I know I'm swearing a lot, but the thing is, they are fed up of what's going on in Parliament. Because whatever happens in Parliament, uh, Hollywood Parliament, it's it's like it's like the arguing people are saying, like the you know the Scottish argument. Scottish argument being, um, you know, we have to stop getting, uh, get away from Westminster. They are taking everything, the, all the money, the oil and everything like that. Well, it's honestly the picture now is becoming more of the Hollywood, Glasgow and Edinburgh again, the more money and the North East is getting absolutely nothing. It's mental. And they're just going to take more refugees in and they're going to, make drug lords legal, you know, selling drugs is okay now, they're gonna charge people for parking their cars, this is the SMP's things willing to do, and it's, it's, it's insane. So I thought maybe you should really hear what was being said in the parliament today, so I'll let you watch this footage from um, today, or today or yesterday, the, of what the toys were saying because it's true what he says so let's go and take a look at Jackson see what he says to Mrs Sturgeon First Minister, the budget this SNP government receives from Westminster is on the rise and what do we have to show for it? Leaking police stations and collapsing ceilings, half-built ferries, boarded up hospitals and closed off children's wards, a crisis in Scotland schools. Years of missed opportunity from a distracted and disengaged government. Because next week we are promised yet more updates on her favourite topic. First Minister, 
What chance is there of updating us instead on when your government is going to start sorting out the things that really matter, which are failing under this SNP administration? First Minister. Well, let me just update uh, Jackson Carlow again on the reality uh, in Scotland, as opposed uh, to what he wants people to think. £1.5 billion in real terms removed from this government's budget by the Conservatives over the past 10 years. Uh, but in spite of that, we've continued to invest in our NHS, taking it to record levels of funding. We've continued to invest in our police service. We've continued to support our public service workers working so hard across the country. Uh, but let me uh, just draw to Jackson Carlaw's attention what the Fraser of Allender Institute has to say about his proposals that he's put forward just in the last couple of weeks. The Freder of Allender Institute makes clear, I'm get a, oh, I'm about to read it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quoting here directly, uh, Jackson Carlaw's proposals would, and I quote, reduce the government's income tax revenues by around 270 million pounds. He, he wants me to go on. So I will go on. Uh, in addition to that, they say that this isn't about middle earners. They say, and again, I'm quoting, a policy framed as supporting middle earners predominantly benefits households at the top of the distribution of household income. So there we have it, presiding officer. £270 million pounds out of our public services and handy to the richest in our society. That's what Jackson Carlaw would deliver. I'll continue to deliver investment in our public services. It's actually unbelievable how much time she tries to save it herself. But I do know there's people in Scotland that want independence so badly, but they're not paying attention to what the actual problems are. Education is low. I'm one of the dumb fucks that came out of school during their lane. Explains why I voted for them, isn't it? Back then. Um, you know, it's um, crime is going to go massively high. I really, I've actually want the police in Scotland to have guns or a new private military force that would secure everyone and make sure everyone's safe. Sounds like a di dictator dystopia. Yeah, I know, but it's the only thing I'm thinking it's going to keep me safe. Okay, what I mean? But it, it, there's so many things wrong with the, this whole independence movement, but there's no mention of what dates are going to be and what could happen. But... As we know, Nicola Sturgeon is going for independence. But the thing is, she doesn't respect the vote. So that's going to have a nice montage of her saying it's once in a, once in a generation. If you could never find content that says once in a fucking generation, once in a lifetime. And the examine said it too. To his opinion, David said it. Well, it was, you get this choice once and that was it only. Or maybe that was Brexit. I don't know. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the this content. There will be more to come out of me sometime in the future. So thank you. And let this be once in a generation. Bag it. <laughs>